Hello to everybody at home watching, welcome to Computer Science's A-Level Virtual Open Evening. In this video we're going to give you a quick rundown on how computer science is studied at Harris Academy Beckenham. To start off, we're going to give you guys a very warm welcome from the computing department. Welcome to Computer Science and ICT, we look forward to you joining us in September. We'll start this off with the entry requirements. To study computer science, you need at least a 6 in both computer science and maths. Alternatively, you can also join the course with a grade 7 or above if you haven't done computer science in GCSE. One of the most frequently asked questions is, will I be behind if I didn't study computer science at GCSE level? The short answer is no. You see, the first couple of terms in year 12 computer science will be going through recaps of all of the GCSE content. All content studied at GCSE level will be covered in a short span of four terms, but in detail. This means you may have to put in a little more effort than those who have covered their content in their GCSE year. Of course, while doing this, we'll be able to support you at every stage and guiding you with whatever it is necessary to get you on the right track. Heading over to the assessments area, you'll be graded based on two papers. Just like in the GCSE year, you'll be having paper 1 and paper 2. The paper 2 aspect covers the theory of computing. This includes data representation, computer networks, cybersecurity, computer systems and most importantly computational thinking. Paper 1 will mostly be about programming and the key detail to highlight is that paper 1 you'll be given a piece of code to revise. This code is given weeks in advance before your exam to prepare you to manipulate or produce new code that will further improve the program in either functionality or efficiency. You'll also be asked to convert pseudocode into Python or Java and then show the application in full functional form. Moving on to our final aspect of this course where we discuss what happens in year 13. Year 13 exams will determine your final grade for this A-level and you'll be assessed based on three different areas. Paper 1 and 2 like previously but this time around we have an extra bit called the non-exam assessment. For short this is called the NEA project and this will divide your results as 40% for paper 1, 40% for paper 2 and 20% for the NEA. Now the NEA is a problem solving project that you as a student will have to undertake. The idea is to create a program that will either solve a complex real life problem or enhance other existing applications. This project will depend entirely on the student's capability to code and creativity to bring their program into real life. Along with actually programming the project in a chosen language, the student is required to create a detailed report summary of the steps taken and the rationale behind the project. It will be graded based on its complexity, design, completion and the meeting of the success criteria. There's obviously lots more content to be discovered in year 13. We'll be providing students a breakdown of how the year curriculum will be delivered and provide two programming languages as options for them to learn. The programming languages are Java and Python, the most popular language in today's tech industry and that's how we'll end off this video. If you are considering computer science as an A-level, we hope that you choose to do the course in Harris Academy Beckenham and we hope to see you next September. We'll end the video by a quote from Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple. Hello and welcome to Computer Science's Programming Lecture and today we're going to be learning about Java and it's a programming language uh, that allowed me to create multiple animations in the past. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be creating a ball that moves around when you uh, click on a few buttons on the keyboard. So to start off we have our typical um, void setup and void draw. We're not going to discuss these for now. What we're going to be talking about is our size function. Now this size function allows me to manipulate the area that I want uh, my animation to play in. Okay, So this entire screen is 800 pixels by 500 pixels. Now if I wanted to make this larger it's just as simple as adding a few digits and now my screen is a lot larger. We don't want it that large, so we'll just keep it 500, uh, sorry, 800 by 500. Okay, so let's start with basics. Okay, we're going to be using a function called ellipse, and what this does is it allows me to create a ellipse shape, which is a circle, in coordinate x, which is 50, coordinate y which is 50 again, so 
50 across, 50 down, and then the size of the uh, or the radius of the circle is again 50 by 50. So the width and the height. And now again, if I want to manipulate that, all I have to do is make the uh, the width 100, and we can see that our circle has increased in size. Okay, we can make this 100. And it's a bit more balanced now because the circle has perfect circle radius. Okay, so right now we have our circle displaying on the screen, but so far we have no functionality. Okay, so it doesn't actually do anything so far. Let's make uh, let's make something happen. Okay, so to make something happen, first we need to declare some variables. Okay, so maybe int uh, x chord equals 50 okay we're gonna have to use something to replace the coordinates of the ellipse all right uh, and then we'll do int y chord equals 50 okay and now instead of using 50 which is a static number doesn't change we can use x chord and y chord okay so our memory our ram recognizes x chord as 50 now and y chord as 50 so it doesn't uh, it, it it's it's not going to affect the program if the coordinates for the uh, ellipse it, it, it has the word x chord or y chord instead of actual numbers so if we actually play it we're going to see it's actually representing the same thing okay so our background is slightly gray right now so we're just going to change the background color um yeah, we'll keep it black for now, just so we can see some uh, something rolling. Um, let's deal with the animation. How do we animate this ball? Okay, obviously to animate the ball, we need to do something with the coordinates of the ball. So far, it's at a fixed state of 50, so it doesn't move at all. The coordinates of the ball is 50, and because it's in void draw, it's just being drawn over and over and over and over and over again in the coordinate 50. Okay, now if we want to simply animate it, it's quite simple. All you have to do is maybe make a simple command of uh, plus plus, uh, x called plus one, maybe. So let's try that out. Okay, uh, nope, should do it plus plus x called plus plus in the void draw option as you guys can see the ball is moving to one direction now um is this enough for us uh not really because we know that once the ball reaches the very very end the ball is going to disappear and in this case we can't really control the direction of the ball we can only make it go in a straight direction or we can make it go downwards if we wanted to mess with the y coordinate now the ball is going to go downwards uh, or we can make it go diagonally which is adding both of the well adding a a one every single frame um uh, every time uh, th this program is run okay so that's what the plus plus is for the plus plus just means you're adding a one to 50 every second so every frame we're adding a 1 to 50 that means the coordinates of the ball is constantly changing and we can see this if we print the actual uh coordinates okay all right uh, oops it's x chord and y chord okay so let's try printing this out and we're going to see the coordinates change from 50 as you guys can see, they're both changing at the same time, but the coordinates are changing now. Okay, they're no longer 50, they're just increasing by one every single frame. Okay, so let's make it so we can actually control uh, which direction we want the ball in. And this will mean we're going to have to use some more built in functions. And our very, very first built in function is if key pressed. Okay. Just make sure we've got the brackets so true okay so this simple uh, function is just um, asking the program if any keys are pressed any key meaning any key on your keyboard if there is any key on your keyboard being pressed we want it to do something okay so let's say um, we place this piece of code over here let's comment this out so let's say we press a uh, a button on our keyboard as soon as we press the button on our keyboard we can see that the coordinates are being added together 
instead of it actually doing it automatically um, without us being without us pressing anything. So now we have control of when the ball actually uh, decides to move. Okay, so we need to be a bit more specific if we want it to move to a certain direction. Okay, so let's do that right now. Okay, I'm gonna do it by adding another function. Okay, so our very first function is if key pressed, any key in your keyboard, doesn't matter which key. Now we have to specify which key. Now if key, so now we're specifying the actual key is, let's say W, okay? If the key is W, we now have the power to do something when we press W, okay? So what we wanna do when we press W is, um. Let's just make this empty for now. And what we're going to do is, whenever we press W, we want to change the, uh, let's say, the Y coordinate, okay? Because W means go up. Y coordinate minus minus, okay? Uh, let's make another one just so, just just so we're just so we have multiple keys uh, in our in our arsenal, okay? Else, if key all right, let's do S so we can go up and down. Okay, so if key is W, else if key is S, so either one. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to make it instead of Y called minus minus, which means go up, Y called plus plus, which means you can go down. Now, let's try this out. Our ellipse is over here. It's it, it doesn't have the plus plus and the minus minus in the actual initialization of the ellipse. But if I press S, we can see that the ball is moving downwards. If I press W, we can see that the ball is moving upwards. Now, if we want to make it go left and right, very, very simple. Do the same thing. Okay. All right. Uh, whoops. We do the same thing. Uh, let's say D to move right but this time we have to mess with the x coordinate all right and a to go back so let's try this out now there we go if i press d the x coordinate adds one every second the more i hold on to d if i press s it goes down if i press a it goes sideways and if I press W, it goes up. So now we have our rolling ball animation. If we want it to be faster, we can always make it so that it add, it's adding 50, let's say, or uh, 10, for example. Okay, so if we do 10, we're going to see... Um, oops. Uh, minus equal 10. Okay plus equal 10 minus equal 10 we're going to see that our ball is actually a lot faster in terms of traveling around yeah now it looks more a bit more of a, a bit more of an animation okay and of course there's multiple different functions to learn it's not just this we can also try mouse x okay mouse y and we can simply pretend to be drawing not just pretend actually draw on the screen using our ball now this is just following the coordinates of the mouse the coordinates of the mouse x and the coordinates of the mouse y which means it's just drawing the ball every single time i move the mouse okay i hope you enjoyed this lecture if you have any questions please do not hesitate to email me my name is mr elmastri and i'm the subject lead in harris academy at beckenham for computer science thank you very much